So I had to make a disclaimer for this video. For whatever reason, I kept saying payback instead of fast lane. I'm not even sure. I'm literally just finished looking through the video and I kept saying payback instead of fast lane. I don't know what's my infatuation with payback, but the next pay per view is fast lane. I think I did it on the previous video last week talking about payback. It's fast lane. It's fast lane. It's fast lane. So just letting you guys know, giving you guys a heads up. If you see me say payback, I meant to say fast lane. Comment down below how many times I say payback in this video. I just want to know. I want y'all to know. I know how many times, but I want to see if you guys can pick up how many times I said payback in this damn video. But let's get right back into it. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back here again with another video. So I know I'm kind of behind on the wrestling clips from last week. I'm going to dive into the Bobby Lashley winning the WWE Championship after I talk about Roman Reigns, Daniel Bryan, and then Daniel Bryan facing Jay Uso to ultimately win and have the opportunity to face Roman Reigns at Payback. So I want to get my thoughts and opinions on, on both of these things. Those are kind of the highlights for for me personally uh, for wrestling this week um, and on the WWE side of things. So let's get right into it. First things first, let's talk about the promo between Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns at the beginning of the show. Um, once again, Roman Reigns has proven how a character change and a little bit of direction, especially from Paul Heyman, can really change a person's career. I remember a time Roman Reigns promos were super cringe, super scripted, wasn't believable. You know what I'm saying? And now this is one is like it's like a complete 360. His promos are believable. He sounds like. What he's telling you, he believes. I like the the statement that he was saying, you're the underdog. You know what I'm saying? You sometimes, you know, you get those lucky breaks when, you know what I'm saying, things go right for you in the WWE. You know, like he basically is, you know, kind of alluding that Daniel Bryan needed this to work out. Roman Reigns doesn't need it. To work out, you know, what I'm saying he wants it, he loves it. He was insinuating that Daniel Bryan doesn't really love the business; he needs it because where else would Daniel Bryan be? And Roman Reigns is in in his mind is like, I didn't need the WWE, but I love it. I want to provide for people. You know, people need me in the back. You know, what I'm saying people need me on SmackDown. Hell, he even announced that the cameraman needed him. You know what I'm saying? I, I love this idea that Roman in his head is the be-all, the see-all, be-all. You know what I'm saying? And everyone needs to bow down to him because he's doing them a favor. He's feeding everybody. It goes back to the head of the table mantra that he's kind of created. It's like, I am at the top for a reason. I feed everybody. I put food on your table. I put money in your pockets because without me, this show wouldn't be what it is. And to be honest with you, if you want to be 100% here, I don't think SmackDown would be as watchable as it is if it wasn't for Roman Reigns being the top guy, being a universal champion. And I'm just be honest. I'm being dead serious right now. I think Almost every match Roman Reigns has been involved in since he came back, it's been entertaining as hell. Seriously. And it's because of his character, his his aggression, his moveset, how he talks to people, how he moves around. Like, he makes the show so much more watchable. I'm not going to lie to you. He's an entertaining heel. You want to see him get his ass beat, but you also want to hear what he has to say. I love it. I love it. I love it. And he basically just talking down to Daniel Bryan, like, look, look, bro, like, once Jey Uso beat you in the steel cage tonight, you will acknowledge me as someone, as your tribal chief, as the guy that provides for you. Love it, love it, love it. Um, then, of course, Daniel Bryan was about to say something. And, of course, Jey Uso, he, he's bought into it. And he's like, yo, you, you're not going to get any closer to this championship than what you are right now. So. They had that little scuffle in the ring, and I, I like the fact that Roman Reigns, he didn't jump in. He didn't have to. 
He doesn't feel like he needs to. He's like, no, I, don't, I don't have to jump in. I don't have to jump you from my high, even though that's something that Roman would do. He's like, that's fine. You got one up on my cousin. Congrats. You won't win tonight. So, of course, they're having their steel cage match. Um, Roman is sitting in front of the steel cage, just, you know, seeing what Jay can do. And I love the fact that um, the match was, for one, entertaining as hell. It's it's, it's it's good to see a steel cage match, even though we've seen one with Kevin Owens a few weeks back. Well, you know, like a few weeks back. But those matches, you know what I'm saying, with stipulations involved, they're, they're highly entertaining. Some, it's been, I know in the past when people brought up steel cage matches, it didn't really mean much for me personally, but it, it gives me those old school feels like when people announce a steel cage match for the next upcoming week of, of shows or whatever. Like, I remember as a kid getting excited about it because I knew something was about to go down. And they, they've they kind of brought some weight to these steel cage matches. So I, I did enjoy it. Um, I like the fact that Daniel Bryan was able to hit the yes lock. And, of course, there is no getting to the bottom rope to break the hold. So Jay Uso just was sitting there stuck in the, uh, in the yes lock. And he had to tap out, man. He had to tap out right in front of Roman. And he earns his right to face Roman Reigns at payback. I'm looking forward to that. I know that match is going to be fantastic. I know it is. And it's it's crazy. It's come full circle. I believe WWE, like maybe a couple of days ago, they posted the Daniel Bryan versus Roman Reigns match at Payback. I want to say 2014. Correct me if I'm wrong. So it's funny how it's come full circle. The roles are pretty much the same except Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns at that time was was a face, but the crowd didn't care for Roman Reigns at all. This time, Daniel Bryan is still the face, but Roman is this mega heel, and I'm, I'm pretty sure if there were some crowds available, they would be still booing the hell out of him, but for the right reasons. So I'm looking forward to that match. Um, <clears throat> to be honest with you, I don't see Daniel Bryan winning. I, I could see him maybe losing in some type of fashion where Roman Reigns is having a tough time putting him away, as he should, because Daniel Bryan is a fantastic wrestler. If he can last a good 15, 20 minutes with Brock Lesnar, I think he should be able to last with Roman Reigns. But ultimately, I think some type of interference will happen and he'll win by cheating means as a heel should. And, of course, he'll be going to face Edge at WrestleMania. It, it really doesn't make sense to have Daniel Bryan win this one because you need to have Roman Reigns go into WrestleMania as the heel and Edge be the face, have the great face versus heel dynamic. It's harder to pull off when it's face versus face at WrestleMania. So I love Daniel Bryan, but ultimately I think the correct booking decision here is to have Roman Reigns win. So, comment down below. Let me know if you guys agree with me on that decision. Do you think Daniel Bryan should win at Payback? Or should Roman Reigns still remain champion? I would love to get your thoughts and opinions on that. Um, and now let's talk about Bobby Lashley finally becoming the WWE champion. Um, it's crazy because he's a heel. He's technically a heel. And the fact that he won the championship, I think... If there was a crowd there, it would have been a nice little pop. I'm not even going to lie to you. Because the Miz being his champion is not really believable. For me, not not as head champion. But Bobby Lashley as the head WWE champion, a little bit, a lot more believable. Especially with this faction he's with. I think him being in the fashion, the Hurt Business, I think, I think that's perfect. I think that's fantastic. It helps. He doesn't have to be always on the mic. It, it, it just helps build up his heel persona. I'm all for it. Uh, him being a champion. I don't know if he'll go out of WrestleMania as still the champion, but at least have him hold it to WrestleMania. I think that's cool. I know he did call out Brock Lesnar on Twitter, basically saying, yo, bro, I'm the WWE champ. I've been wanting to fight you for a minute. What's up? So I, if WWE is able to get Brock Lesnar into the mix, I don't want to see a Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley match by itself. I don't think it will be as entertaining. But 
I know Drew McIntyre is still probably going to be in the mix. So if there's a way for them to get Drew McIntyre back into title contentionship, if there's a way if he has to beat some people to get back into it, I think that would be cool. And if they have a triple threat, now that I'll be I'll, I'll, I'll be all for Drew McIntyre versus Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley. All three men have history. Drew beat uh, Brock Lesnar for the championship. Bobby Lashley is the reason why Drew doesn't have the championship. I think the story writes itself. Bobby Lashley wants a piece of Brock Lesnar. And at the end of the day, you don't have to have Brock Lesnar get pinned again clean at WrestleMania. You can actually pin Bobby Lashley because it's a triple threat match. So I don't know if they would do that because, you know, Brock won't have his mouthpiece as in Paul Heyman. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes about. But I want to know if you guys would agree with that. And the only reason why I thought about that, because there's some people in the YouTube community that have put that idea out there that a possible triple threat match could be on the way between Brock, Drew and um, and Bobby Lashley. So but overall, I'm happy that Bobby Lashley is the champion. It's crazy, like I said, because he's a heel. He. Beats up the Miz, gains the championship, and then he proceeds to beat up the Miz again after celebrating. That's a heel like move. The Miz is a heel, but you want to see the Miz get his ass beat because he's an annoying prick. You know what I'm saying? So I think if a crowd was there, they would have popped. I'm not gonna lie. Bobby Lashley as the WWE champion, a little bit more believable. So we got two heel champions at the top of the card: Bobby Lashley, Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is still the better heel, better on the mic, better in ring like ability, like not ability but like move set. I like, I, I definitely like in Roman Reigns better, but Bobby Lashley has definitely grown on me more. He's not as bland. He's more aggressive, more brutal. I love that. So I'm definitely rocking with Bobby Lashley as being the champ on Monday Night Raw. So comment down below. Let me know if you guys are looking forward to payback. Who do you have winning against? Uh, Daniel Bryan versus Roman Reigns. And would you guys be interested in seeing a Drew McIntyre, Bobby Lashley, and a Brock Lesnar match at WrestleMania? Let me know. I would love your feedback and comments. Sorry for the late video, but more videos should be dropping this week. Uh, just be patient with me. I've been, you know, working on some stuff for the main channel as well. So I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 40K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. And I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.